Hey guys, what's going on? It is Andy Elliott. I'm here today with the one and only Miss Jacqueline Elliott. That was you. you thought I was going to introduce them at first. <laughs> <laughs> Tricked you. Um, you did trick me I got Bobby and Shelly Gini. Shelly Gini. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyways, uh, we were joking before we got on this. We always have fun. Um, they're a power couple. We're a power couple. We kick ass. We decided today to get us all together. And really, like, truly, like, me and Jacqueline was like, you know, like, building a marriage is, like, one of the most important things or any relationship. Mm, and the most challenging as well. Um, well, no. To, but well, most to, fulfilling. But, but to be successful, right? Like, if you want to be successful, if I have a badass personal life, if I have a badass relationship with my wife or my girlfriend or my boyfriend, you know, whoever you're with. Hopefully you're, you don't have a boyfriend. Well, whoever you are that you're doing um, life with, if your right. relationship is amazing and someone else is just as good as you in business and their relationship with their partner isn't amazing, they're going to lose because over time they'll burn out, they'll mm -hmm. fall apart. Um, I always say people don't have business problems, they have personal problems. And personal problems get brought into business right. and businesses burn. Yep. And that's how people burn out and they lose their purpose. And so like this, the home life, we've managed to grow a big you know, empire by us staying close. And um, this couple is amazing and they stay very close and they built a big business too. So we thought, hey, let's interview them like us. They're and like then minded. let's rip. And my wife has the lawyer mentality. She's ready to rip. So Jacqueline, how would we like to start out by interrogating them today? <laughs> interrogating? I don't know if I like the word interrogating. Very I'm kind interrogation. <laughs> but, uh, 23 years. <laughs> Who's the dirtiest? <laughs> dirtiest as far as... I don't know. What well, do you think? Just oh, think your me. mind. If Andy Elliott is asking that question, what do you think? You're talking about a woman that just physically takes probably three showers a day. But if you want to talk about dirty minds, it's definitely me. Yeah. But, uh, you know. No, well, joking. maybe it's her, but maybe you guys haven't got close enough yet, and you don't know that. Oh, we would oh, know. know. We yeah, know. Big beat, baby. I'm I know. just kidding. I'm just teasing. I'm I probably drag it out of her quiet from time on this to time. One. I'm not saying anything. I'm just kidding, baby. All right, let's let it rip, babe. Yeah. So, 23 years, you guys got three kids. Four. Four, right, four kids. Yeah, it's four now. Mm -hmm. four, four and kids. done, by the way. Yeah, four. Four, four, four and done. I can't. I know I'm done. done. <laughs> yeah. So, since we're talking about your children, what are their ages? So they range. So our son is 13, and then the girls are 10, four, and 18 months. Who's your favorite? You can't. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, but you know. You Each of them in their own way. Each sure. of them in their own way. <laughs> no, so, you know, when Andy was talking about how people don't have business problems, they have personal problems. I mean, it's a very, very important thing. A lot of people don't bring their family along in their business, which is something that you mm -hmm. have done. Right. And you've done very well. And we actually admire and we look up to these people that do that because it's not very easy to figure that out. And you guys have been together for such, such a long time. Mm -hmm. But also, a lot of people are trained in the outside world to keep their business and their home life separate, mm -hmm. right? And I know that as women, we have the power to either build our men up or also tear them down. So if you don't yes. have a good family life, she can make your life miserable. Right. And then, you know, you're you're stuck fighting. That's mm -hmm. right. That, well, they always say that, you know, a good woman can make a good man great, right? Right. But a good, but a bad woman can make a good man horrible. Exactly. And we've seen that happen exactly. yeah. so many times. And it's, it's misfortunate because... Um, there was ways they could have fixed that. There was ways around that. There was there was things they could have done to mm -hmm. strengthen that bond so that they never got to that point. Right. The problem is sometimes by the time we even talk to people, they've already passed a point of almost no return. Right. You know what I mean? Like oh, they've yeah. so much, like you talk about death by a thousand paper cuts. Right. Mm -hmm. They were using machetes. Yeah. And it got so deep like... Well, they're fighting to win. They're fighting to prove their points. Or they just don't care about each other enough to... I to, don't think anybody doesn't care about each other enough. Yeah. I think hurt people hurt people. And I think if you take two people that hate each other mm -hmm. and they're like, we're getting a divorce, when they're signing the papers, they are literally more emotionally hurt than ever before. No one really wants to go to that place. Nobody really wants to go there. I, no. And, but I think a big thing that plays into it is people start to build that resentment towards the other person. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So that's what's the hard part. It it's, just builds because yeah. they don't put it on the table and, and right. get it separated and sorted out they just let it build and build do you think it's because they're so comfortable with each other that they quit trying to prove to each other why they're together and they're just kind of like they've seen me at my worst state and like mm -hmm. they just show the ugly the ugly the ugly and they can't repair it anymore or what do you think is the cause bobby had asked me a couple weeks ago we were talking about this when he was driving a truck and i would follow him around mm -hmm. And he would say, he said, why did you do that? You know, and he would end up with a load like to Columbia, Jeff City, whatever. And I would go meet him and I would bring the kids and we would go meet him to eat. It because might be two that hours, was one way. Because that was the way that he could see us and we could see the kids. And I said, but I think if I didn't, I would have started to resent the fact that you were gone all the time. Even though you were doing it for us, I wasn't 
mad or anything, but you get to where I'm mad. I'm mad that you're not here. I'm mad that you're always gone because it's so much time. So I think that resentment would have started to built in. So I would get in the truck and I would drive to wherever he was and we'd have dinner and we'd make it fun for the kids because I needed that time with him and he needed that time with us. And it was just something that we enjoyed. And doing. I think at the time it wasn't something that I, um, fully understood or fully respected. Mm -hmm. I think later on as we got a little older mm -hmm. and I actually started looking into what it was that made us work so well, those things started becoming very apparent mm -hmm. that we did them unintentionally, mm -hmm. but they were just the right answer. Well, she really loved you because that's some crazy shit. That is. Oh, she did that all the, all the time. time. Cause or I drove like, say, yeah, I mean, I drove like 18 Kansas hours City. a day right. and sleeping know, behind a gas station. I don't know station. many women that would follow their husband in a truck just so they could go eat with him. We did. You're you know, I'd meet him. Lucky. Yeah. For an hour. He's she'd a 45 very, minutes to an hour because yeah. I was on, I was on a time frame. I was like, babe, I got, I got to go drop this load off. And she'd come all the way up there two hours, four hours round trip to eat with me for 45 minutes with the kids. Just so but I, could I see would the kids find like a mall or, or something like that to where we could meet with him, have dinner. I could still take the kids. They could play. They had a little bit of something to do. And then he would go deliver his load and I would go home. That's a good so, one. So, yeah. I mean, it was. So did you have great. anybody? Did you have anybody? Because a lot of people like would complain you know to their friends mm -hmm. to their family be like oh my husband you know obviously with your line of work which we hadn't really talked about maybe you want to say what you do for a living oh, and that I, would really tie in like <laughs> delivering to Columbia. Yeah. what is he a drug lord what does yeah. he do so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was a really long drive now uh, i was we're in the trucking industry i was in the trucking industry i still am but it's not the main focus of what we do on a day-to-day -day. it kind of runs itself now but um it was trucking so i was mm -hmm. driving a truck solo i was the only driver at the mm -hmm. time i hadn't built the company beyond just me mm -hmm. um so that was just mm -hmm. us kind of learning business mm -hmm. so to speak because i didn't have i didn't come from a business background right. my family i they weren't in business nobody taught me that my father mm -hmm. didn't teach me that mm -hmm. um so we kind of just had to figure that out and this were these were things we went through while we were figuring it out okay that's great that we have that kind of background in there yes but part of my question was okay so when you decided to go follow him around mm -hmm. to spend that time that mm -hmm. that takes sacrifice you could have been the woman that was like hey you know, talk to your friends and be like, oh, he's always gone. Like, he's never around. Oh, gosh, you don't deserve mm -hmm. this. You're taking care of the kids on your own. He's only focused on building himself. Like, what was your support system back then uh -huh. that made you basically fight against those odds? If you had those people in your life, right. I don't know if you shared those things and actually, sh actually do that. Like, because I, I remember, like, when I... Like my friends, I would be like, hey, Andy doesn't get home till 11 o'clock at night. And they would mm -hmm. be like, oh, you can't, you shouldn't keep your kids past that time. It's not healthy for them. And I'd be like, it's more healthy for them to be raised without a father. Like you guys don't know our life. So I right. quit talking to them. I pushed them away and I knew that they were against us. So right. what, what did your, what, your parents, your friends, okay. how did that work or what made you go follow him right. around to make sure you stayed close. So I was a teacher mm -hmm. for 10 years. And so I taught second grade elementary and special education was my, is my degree. And Bobby one year came to me and he said, I think we finally made it to where you can resign. So that was for him. Like he was one of the proudest things for him to say, you don't have to go in and work every day. You can be at home and stuff and help with the trucking company and stuff like that. So I was able to do that. So when he was driving a truck and all that, I did have people, and like even my family didn't understand yeah. because they're like, Shelly, birthday parties, I mean, he's missing all kinds of things. Right. And I said, I, I understand that, but I'm not working. I get to be there with my kids every day, all the time. Yeah, so it that. was somewhat of a sacrifice that he didn't get to be, but I was. Mm -hmm. And so it got to where I was like, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm not disappointed. I would just make it work. So if we have to have a birthday party a little bit later in the evening, we just do. Mm -hmm. Or if we go meet him, that's what we did. So my parents... I had been late to my own birthday parties they were throwing <laughs> for me. <laughs> in the beginning, yeah. I don't think they understood. But once they saw what he was doing and the sacrifices that he was making, mm -hmm. they definitely understood. And so they made co accommodations for him also. But she didn't really have anybody to answer that question yeah. simply. To be honest with you, there wasn't anybody that understood enough that you could explain that to. No. They just don't understand. It took time. It really took time. We don't have anybody around us that's really like that. That's why we travel all over to meet people that, yeah. and, that are like-minded because mm -hmm. they just... They're rare. They're more rare than you realize. Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you guys so much for watching the podcast. I had a question for you. Do you guys feel exhausted? Do you feel like you're just going through the motions of life? Do you desire a deeper connection with your spouse? Do you feel like you live in the same house but are miles apart? Listen, we've developed a new program that we just dropped called Relationship Ascendancy. If you go to our website or text Limitless to the number below, we will send you our special offer on our new program. Check out our website and we'll hear from you soon. Thank you. 
and also in the way she probably spoke about you to her family and her you know her parents and friends was in a very positive way mm -hmm. that you know they didn't she didn't allow them to speak negatively right. about you and bobby was 17 when he met my parents yeah. so he grew up i mean they almost treated him like a son also yeah, though so i mean true. we have had that relationship with my parents because they thought of much as him as they did I'm 39, you know my so, own i mean been I've yeah. been there for quite a while so, so he was, I mean, they almost helped raise him also, you know? It's good. It helps. It mm -hmm. definitely helps. Yeah. So you guys have been together for how long? 23 years. 23 years. Yes. 23 years. And it's 23 years. You guys were talking to me a little bit about this before we started, but you have kind of figured a secret recipe because you see a lot of people having problems in their marriages mm -hmm. and you guys have never been to the point where you're like, you know, we're going to separate. We need some time apart. Mm -hmm. We need to do this. Like, how did you figure it out? How did you you know, discover that, hey, you know, it's better to be together and we're not going to get the point to the point where we're going to explode. What can you share? What's your biggest tip, I guess, or biggest how tip. did you do it? So the crazy part is I don't think until you're intentional about looking at that and understanding, like, I want to figure that out, that you really realize what you're doing. Same way when people are doing things wrong, they don't always realize that they're doing it wrong. They're mm -hmm. in it. They're knee deep in it. They don't realize that they're screwing up. So one day we had, I was talking to her about a situation that we had and we worked through it. I, to add to what you had said earlier, real quick, just to give it a little preference, you had said that women can boost men and they can pull them down. Right. I had a really bad day and I came in and we got into this argument because we argue. Don't get me wrong. Yes, just because we've been, sure. it's not kittens and rambles all the We're time. Sometimes you argue. argue. Yeah. Yes. I'm, and, and, and I don't, we don't. Are you and walk away no more. We are you. And then I said, no, 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 we're going to figure this out. Right. Same thing. And we figure it out yeah. in a healthy manner. There's a healthy way we go about it. And then we get resolution at the end mm -hmm. of it. There is resolution at the end of every argument, period. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then like she said, there's just unresolved resentment. Right. So I think that's a very key thing to people. But I came to her and I said, I'm going to tell you something. You're the only person on the face of this earth that can either send me to the moon yeah. or pull me down off the ledge like that. Yeah. Like that quick. Your words, your tonality, what you say to me. You're the only person that can do that. I do not allow anybody in my head like that. Yeah. And I left. Mm -hmm. The next time I had an issue, it was probably a week or two later, I was all built up and I came inside, so-and-so did this, this happened, just shit, because Mondays and just, you know, stuff happens, right? right. So um, she, like, kind of took a breath and she looked at me and she said, how can I help you? And what can I, said, I do? What can, what I, can do? I do? What do you and need? And I was like, what? And she's like, what can I do for you? What can I do to help you? What can I do to take this away from you? Yeah. And it, like, it just changed everything. It changed everything. And so I later came back to her and I said, I want you to know that I realized what you did right there. Yeah. And I recognize that you did it, which is another important thing we like to talk to people about is recognizing when their spouse does something proactively for them. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, I recognize that you did that. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. And her, the way she talks to me now and, and the way I talk to her, that changed after that day. It's never been the same. And so then we started down the rabbit hole of, all the different things that we do and how that works. Because sometimes when you're really busy with business and all these different things that are going on, I don't think that you find it important to actually figure out why it's working. You just know it's working. Mm -hmm. We just, we're working, right? Mm -hmm. um, we love each other. You, you know, you have great intimacy. You have a great bond. You're raising a family together. That's all great. But why is it great? Right. And why is that it's great? The reason that you guys do so well in business. Mm -hmm. Did you ever correlate those two? At some point in time, you had to, yeah, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't. Yeah. But it's usually because they're stuff shit and they can't figure out. I'm sorry if I if I say no. that. No. But we, it's bad. We definitely don't say the word shit around. Okay, I'm so <laughs> yeah, sorry. Because no. uh, yeah. I know. say the F word. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's not shit. <laughs> that, that, that was too, too low. Yeah, you said something really interesting, and I think that that's really the key, and I think a lot of people miss that. And I, I don't know if you realize that you said this, but I think that you gave her that power mm -hmm. and she took that power of hey you know what you basically own me you own my thoughts you own my mind you own my heart yep. right and i trust you with it yep. mm -hmm. okay and the thing is that to find that person that you can be completely vulnerable and still be the man don't get me wrong because right. you, know, right. you need to be the man right you know and have that complete vulnerability just put on your plate and if you take it the right way and mm -hmm. you know that this person is not going to hurt me she has the best interest in me you know and she's going to to do whatever she has it in her power she has the power to do that and i think that's what we realized you know that hey then we don't take it lightly right it probably and we took make me sure 15 that, years to get exactly, to that point though exactly yes and if somebody would have told me you know maybe 10 years prior to that and we'd have known enough about each other mm -hmm. in five years could have started that then mm -hmm. and our whole life 
we could have lived that life for a very long time. Yeah, men right. take a long time to grow up. Don't they? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I just did What did you day. say? <laughs> Every day I think I wake up. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Can you repeat that? <laughs> just kidding. They do. We do. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, and I think that level of immaturity that we do always keeps something that keeps them attracted to us. Just because I am a kid at heart. I'm mm-hmm. a, a geek over cars. I'm a geek over all kinds of, of goofy stuff that mm-hmm. kids are anymore. But, right. you know, it's what I bond over my 13-year-old with. So, um, and like she always says, she didn't marry herself. Yes, I didn't marry myself. I do want somebody else that has opinions and different. a different way of looking at it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of things I don't like about myself. I would hate to be married to me, mm-hmm. for sure. Well, I, w- <laughs> I just know that it would be um, boring. It would be boring, yeah. And yes. So, and so giving her that power, mm-hmm. and that's not something I do. Very, I'd never, ever talk to anybody like that. But I let her know that, you know, at this point in life, just being able to have somebody take some of that stuff off my plate sometimes and know I trust that she just take that. I don't care if it's stress, if it's anxiety, um, if it's worry, if yeah. it's whatever it is. If I can just hand that to her and be like, I trust that you're not going to mess this right. up for me and make yeah. me worse and you're going to make it better, please help me. Well, well, that's what marriage is about. Yeah, right? well, love is the, giving someone the power to hurt you and trusting that they won't. Exactly. And why is it so hard for people to do? You know what I mean? Just because we want to have control. Yeah, and they have a history and that's why they can't they can't grow because of that history. Instead of using that pain to, to become better, they everything. try it's to... Like, it's like building a company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if, if you want to have control of everything and you don't want to build any leaders... Well, you're going to look up one day and you're not going to have shit because be it's just you. Mm-hmm. And that's why most people just, they don't, you know, they don't want to, they want to keep control. What's, mm-hmm. what's in your opinion is the mindset shift for people to quit being their own shit, so to speak, and learn well, a higher way of control thinking. for so long and you realize you don't get you nowhere and you run on this treadmill and then you're like, all right, screw it. I'm going to try something else. I think it's forgiveness. I think you have to either forgive yourself or forgive other people in order to be in. It's like if you were had a bad relationship before her. I know you've been together forever, right? right. But if yeah. you had a bad relationship mm-hmm. and you're looking at her and you don't trust her because you've gotten hurt by somebody else, mm-hmm. you know, then it's not going to happen for you, right? So I think also it, it can be the other way. You could have been bad to somebody else, mm-hmm. right? And you feel like you don't deserve the life that you had because of the person that you are. You're constantly telling yourself who you are and you're not forgiving yourself or forgiving your partner. Then you're going to be you're going to be lost forever and you're going to live in that state. Sure. You yeah. know, so I think it has to do with, with forgiving yourself and just, just growing in that. But it's, it's really cool that you guys were able to figure it out. And it seems like, what about like with children though? Like when you had your kids, like with me, I had a big problem when I had my kids. Like I fell in love with my kids so much yeah. that I kind of put them aside, honestly, because I got so much reinforcement. And so I knew that my baby like needed me so badly that mm-hmm. I kind of, like push them aside. Did you get to that point as well? Or how did that happen with you? I think with our older two, um, I did, we did a lot. Everything was the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids. Mm -hmm. We went out to eat we had the kids. We didn't take, we didn't really travel much. We didn't do a lot of date nights and stuff like that. After we had the second two, um, we learned that we needed that time and that we needed that just, it was very important for us and stuff. And so we, you know, you find a babysitter and you stuff like that because my mom and sister said to me, you waited to have four kids to have date yeah. nights and take trips and stuff. But we got, we matured. You get old, but you we mature did. with age, you know? Some yes. Some of this is, is age, you know. I mean, there was probably a point in your life where you hit an age where you're like, I just get it now. I didn't get it before. Like, I, I get what my parents might have said, or I start to get these things. You get your kids, you go through enough with them, you start to understand some of the stuff that they were talking about, but then you also start to understand they weren't always right. Right. You know what I mean? And that was a sad realization is it's like, you learn my a lot of what didn't go on date nights no. or trips Mine were divorced. Or... I mean, I've, it's just, mm-hmm. and even hers were together for a very long time and, and they loved each other very much. It just, I still think at the, at the end of the day, they all look at their relationship sometimes and, and wish they could have done this or done that. I don't ever want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to look at my regrets, relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. I look at other people's lives and either I admire what they have going on and I want to be just like that or, or a version, my version of that. Or I look at things they've been through and I'm like, God, I would, I would never want to go through that. I would never want to put you through that. Right. You know, and, and as she said earlier, putting yourself second sometimes. You know, people, I do think it's important to put yourself first as far as That's if you're the best you're version of yourself, mm-hmm. everybody else right. around you, your family, your wife, your, your, uh, you know, everybody, your employees, all them, they all benefit from that. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And that was something that I had to go through myself. Mm-hmm. And it was a hard conversation for us to have because it, on its face, it looks like you're being selfish. But in reality, 
me being 300 pounds, me being pre-diabetic, me driving all the time. I had made an oath to her that when my son was old enough to understand when I was gone, when he's like, where's dad, what's he doing? I better have my shit together with my company mm -hmm. to where I can start to back off and right. be more present. Right. Because otherwise, I'm just repeating what, what I grew up as, and, and I didn't want that. You know, which my dad is wonderful. He did, took very good care of us, loved us, all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. did we do a lot of little league games or, you know, quality time outside of maybe two hours before bed, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that? No. So, and I love him to pieces. It doesn't matter. But um, I didn't want that for my kids. I want right. to be, I want to be there. I want to go do those things with them. I want to bring them on trips out here to see you guys. I want to, you know, we travel all over with them. We take them with us mm -hmm. and when, when it matters. They have great kids. I mean, just meeting them. They're just, they're awesome. It's really yeah. good that they get to experience you know, that with you guys, yeah. it's really cool. But so, taking the time for each other makes us better parents, though, mm -hmm. too. Of course. You know what I mean? Of course, of course. You can pour into them. Mm -hmm. you know, because if not, they're just so used to just having you. If you yes. go take off and you get home, like, they run towards you, you know, and everything. What right. about your business? How do you do you run your business together? Or what, what are your rules? Yes. Go ahead. Well, just we've got three <laughs> companies that we yes. run. Um, the trucking company I've been running myself for so long, and she's done the backside of things. So right. all the administrative type things, mm -hmm. she's always helped me a lot with that. I'm more of a hammer, and she's more of a quill, if you want to look at it that yeah. way. She's more elegant on the backside, and I'm more just, we got to get it done. Yeah. So I'm usually on the front side pushing, and she's on the back side mm -hmm. making sure I don't slip. But um, that she, I would say that's more of an 80-20 type thing. Mm -hmm. And when we started the Hormone Clinic, which is a franchise that we jumped into, um, that was 50-50. I mean, I did the business side of that, and she does all the personnel. Right. And I did that intentionally because I was running into an issue in the trucking company where I, was, I wasn't a very good leader because I was too much of a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there, was present too much. They respected me, but they also, when they seen you not in a truck anymore, then it created some issues with some of the drivers. Yeah. And so um, I, I told her when we started that other company, I needed her to, to handle personnel and let me just do business. Mm -hmm. Now, when we started Limitless Vitality Group, which is um, – uh, the consulting company that we have, we do that 100%. Because if we're talking to couples, if we're if we're showing people this better path, if we're not both there giving our point of views on that, it yeah. means nothing. If I'm like, oh, Shelly says this, Shelly says that, or she's like, Bobby, it doesn't work. You know, we That's both got to be there in that, so... And we're that. very much on, like, kind of having your own lane. So if, you know, if something comes up at the clinic or something like that, it's a Shelly question or it's a Bobby question. It just yeah. depends. So we have pretty definite roles in the companies and, she has strong and points our lanes. And I have strong yeah. points, but we don't trip now on that. Now I might ask Bobby the question like behind the scenes before I tell the employees right. what we need to do, but but um yeah, we and do try versa. to kind of keep our lanes as right. far as that kind of stuff goes. But she's she's got definite strong points and then definite right. weak points and she's got no problem admitting that same here. If I'm like right. that's just not my strong point, yeah. that's something you're very strong in. Yeah. Just take the lead on it. Yeah. Super important guys if you're watching this video right now and you're like Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Awesome. What about the kids when you guys are, because you have little kids and mm -hmm. you run three businesses, mm -hmm. right? So how, how do the kids fit in? What do you, how, what are the conversations that you have with your children about business and how does that, how does that work? They, they love it. They love to talk business with us and stuff. Mm -hmm. They, um, the little ones go to preschool a couple days a week. So I am able to go into the office and then the other couple of days I am able to stay home with them. Mm -hmm. Um, but we do have a lot of business conversations. Even the, the older two were on our podcast one day and they, love to talk about what's going on and have definite their own ideas and opinions and our stuff, production but... company has a thing he does with people called legacy podcasts mm -hmm. if you guys have never done one it's awesome so basically bring your kids in and you do this whole conversation with them between business and life and everything and you hold that footage mm -hmm. and one day when you're no longer here they have that and then they can pass it down mm -hmm. and so it's like this thing that you had where like if you were the bloodline breaker if you were the generational breaker mm -hmm. of what was going on three, four generations down the road, they can pull that up and be like, this is where it started. Mm -hmm. It started right here. This conversation I had with them, this was them in the middle of all of that. Right. So we did one of those with them. And I've, I released like two or three pieces of it, but I probably got 50 pieces right. that I just kept for them. And Dominic would ride with you in the truck. And Dominic and, came with me everywhere. We, uh -huh. talk, we talk a lot of business. And sometimes, oddly, their point of view, their perspective on things mm -hmm. is enlightening. 
um, because they simple. see it very simply and we overcomplicate mm-hmm. things. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So sometimes I'll bounce things off yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, what do, you, like, what do you think about this? Or he overhears me. He's like, well, what about? And he'll explain something. I'm like, it's really not a bad idea, actually. Exactly. Mm-hmm. No, your kids are so creative. They come up with so many different things. We learn from them so much. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your biggest challenge that you think with your business and, you know, your kids and everything else? Like, I know that everybody has some type of like, hey, I wish I could do more of this. What would that be for you? Go ahead. For me, um, you can ask some questions too. Yeah, though. you're just ripping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably have more than one, to be quite honest. Okay. You know what I mean. Um, one of the things I'm working on right now is leadership. You mm-hmm. know, I I really work really hard on being a better leader within my family, mm-hmm. and I think I've done a very mm-hmm. good job in doing that. But within my companies, uh, I really have. It's come to light that there's some things that I can do way better to be a better leader mm-hmm. for them. You know, and then. Um, Time is always that thing, like we talked about earlier, yeah, that yeah. you're chasing, you know what I mean? And I look at these moments that I miss or opportunities and that when the perspective changes from is that important, not important to, God, if I don't capitalize on that, what could have been, mm-hmm. you start to really look at things a little bit different. And so spotting good opportunity, letting go of bad opportunity, not chasing the girl in the red dress, as we call it, which is just that distraction. Right. You know what I mean? I think Alex Ramosi talks about that. Mm-hmm. It's the matrix. She wears the red dress. She wears the red dress. <laughs> yeah. I just chase her. I keep my eyes <laughs> over hot. here. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. So, uh, and, and you know, and that's something too. She, she's always like, you gotta, you know, we're talking to people like, you gotta keep it spicy. Oh yeah. You, you know? do. You have to right. keep it spicy. Gosh, you to, you, she's like, I dress you know? up for me. But I dress up for him too. Right. You know what I mean? And if he's if he gives me compliments and stuff, I love that stuff. Yeah. She's right. like, and so I'm gonna do it even more. You know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. Keep in it it's hard for people to look in a mirror and realize that sometimes when shit fell apart, it wasn't always the other person. Yeah. Sometimes it was them. Mm-hmm. Right. And I didn't want to do that. I was very intentional intentional about that. And then sometimes I would bring that to her and I would express those things to her without trying to sound like I am beating you up over anything, mm-hmm. but to get your brain working about, hey, do you understand like the concept of what I'm saying? Like this is a realization that I've yeah. had given to me. So let me pass it to you and let you start to ponder on it a little bit. Exactly. And, and at first like she might have been together. like, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. Level up in every way, shape mm-hmm. and form. Yeah. So for me, it'd probably be, it'd be time and being a better leader. Those are probably the two, two biggest things that uh, I'm struggling with right now. And, and as far as time goes, that would be time management, just making sure that I'm managing my time the most efficient way possible and not only for financial gain but for um what really means the most to us in life which is those moments or those times with family or times with friends or you know is it the business at that point that you should be focusing on or should you be focusing more on this thing over here that you know my my daughter's dance recital Mm -hmm. she's one a year am i going to miss that over some work or is that work going to be there when i get back or do i miss that dance recital i don't miss the dance recital it's becoming unnegotiable yeah Yeah. sure yeah. And you? And I think for me, it's just making sure that when I'm in it, that's my priority. So if I'm at the business, I kind of have to focus on the business. If I'm with the kids, I'm focusing on the kids and trying to departmentalize what I'm working on at the time. Because otherwise, if I am thinking about business, but I'm having a conversation with my children, yeah. they're missing out. Yeah. So it's just kind of trying to make sure that I'm really present where I'm at and just gratitude doing the best, really doing the best that I can. Yeah. Very good. How about you guys? Well, you're basically talking about a lot of the stuff that we preach all the time. I mean, we have a couple's mastermind that we do, we have, and we talk yes. about, you know, the fighting. We talk about setting goals. We talk about, you know, being present where your feet are, mm-hmm. you know, and that way you can be more productive. You don't want to be, you know, with your family and be thinking about work because it does them no good. The right. kids don't want right. you to tell them, hey, I missed you today. They want you to show that you're going to be the badass mom when you get there and be intentional with your time and show mm-hmm. them why why you were gone, you know, and they're not going to be thinking about why you're gone. They're going to be thinking about what you're doing at the moment to create a memorable moment. So it's like all the stuff you're thinking about is stuff that we can relate to. And it's really cool to be able to see couples that are like-minded that Mm -hmm. have gone through certain things to make sure that they value each other and grow in business. And that's the reason why you have, you know, what you have in your business and that's mm-hmm. why you're growing is because I'm sure that you share the same goals and dreams and everything and yeah, you're bringing yeah. your family along with you. So it's all basically like, you know, it's all the same, which is really cool uh, to see. Mm-hmm. So And when we realized that it was like either you could just bask in that and love it and move on or you can get to a point where you're like, let's, we talked to all these other people that are having little issues and mm-hmm. big issues and we're like, we could help them. We could help mm-hmm. these people. You know what I mean? We yeah. could take what we know to be true, mm-hmm. what we've tested, right. what we've been through, what we've figured out, and we can show other people, exactly. if they're willing to listen, 
how so you can do it. being a good human is about. Mm-hmm. Now, since you guys have been together for so long, I have to ask you because you guys are, seem like this is the perfect couple. I'm sure there's <laughs> been times where, you know, one of you is growing and one of you is not growing just as much, right? Right. How have you dealt with those times and feeling like you're not outgrowing the other? Because I get that question a lot with people where they're like, man, I, I'm growing in my business. I'm, I'm working out. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this. I'm focused on all this other stuff. But I can't seem to get my wife on that same page and it gets to that point where they resent each other in a way and it's almost like they're holding each other back but she's been there forever she's been there for years and sometimes she's been at a different level and she's put up with your ass but at the same time you can't really get rid of that resentment as it starts coming because you're like man right now I'm trying to take my momentum I'm Mm -hmm. trying to run with it it's like I can't get seem to get to that same level so why don't you share maybe an experience that you've had to go through and how you got out of it so just to preference that, I joke because she she joked with me one day and she goes, I'll probably be your greatest project ever, won't I? <laughs> and I said, you will be because... I he refu- started the journey first. I started the journey first, <laughs> but I refused to let her be behind. And I'm competitive enough that that's not going to happen. So what happened You know was, what I mean? I so we that. are going to push each other. Yeah, I love yes. That. I told her, I said, as people grow, as, as I, you know, my daughter came up to me one day. I was standing there with my shirt off and, and she hit me on my belly. And a week or two prior to that, we were down in Branson, Missouri, and we couldn't ride a ride because it weighed too much for the two of us because I was too heavy. At the time, she weighed like 40 pounds. So it was me. I had a silver. I had to go get her. We waited in line for over an hour. I was embarrassed as all get out. And I knew all these things. You know. You look at yourself. You're like, I, I need to make a change, but I'm not well, doing Well, that's it. long gone because you got like veins. Uh, like I'm, yes, I'm trying. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, but you, when, you, when, you, when you're following guys like this around and they're beating that into your brain yeah. and you start to realize everybody else's life that it's changed, you're like, you know what? There's probably something to this. There's, you really need to... Be about it. Quit talking about it. Quit wishing and go freaking do it. And so basically it was a shut up and put up kind of thing. So um, fast forward a week later, daughter come up, smack me. And she's like, dad, you're getting big. Beautiful eyes. Looks right at me. I look down at her and she says, she said that to me. And I'm like, what? She said it again. She's like, I don't mean nothing by it. I'm just saying, I'm like, but I was really hurt. I was offended because I knew it was true, Mm -hmm. you know? And so. Best thing she ever did. Right. Best best thing she ever did. For me. And I will tell you this. (laughs) For both of you. She was honest with me. Her innocence. She wasn't. I told her, I'm like, babe, you could have told me. But and she's like, but you, I love I you the say, way you are. And I'm like, you, you need don't. To get hel- you know, because you I need to be healthier. I, was, I wasn't being but... the best person that I could be for you. I wasn't being right. the best husband. I wasn't being, right. I could be a better version of myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just to say that you love somebody as they are, is that not a different way of saying that I'm just fine with the way things are, even though they could be better? It's like a complacency. You know, and I'm like, that's not the best it could well, it's be. It's really showing that person that you really don't believe in them when you do that. Right. Like, if they, if you believe that you're going to love them the way they are, mm-hmm. and you're showing and you're telling them that, you know, it's different if you tell them, hey, you know what, I love you, but there is another level to you, and you, you keep that part out of yeah. it, it means you really don't believe in them. It's almost like you've right. given up, and right. you're like, okay, I have to accept you now. Right. Acceptance is very different than believing in somebody. Yes. And that's it's really different. But a lot of people take offense to that. I was a super lot of people, yeah, a lot of people offense, but they don't change. Yes, getting pissed off and staying offended is different than right. getting pissed off and wanting to change. But for coming the from her, it hit differently because coming from her, mm-hmm. or coming from any adult, a friend or whatever, you could take that almost as as a as a hit. Yeah. But coming from your daughter, who loves the pieces out of you, yeah. and she's looking at you and smiling at you while she says it, it's like she just fed me a shit sandwich. <laughs> And she's smiling like, I love you. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean nothing by it. I'm just being honest. Like, I noticed this. And I'm like, I just can't. So yeah. I started that whole journey. Yes. But that journey didn't just start with the physical fitness. I do believe that is the first place that you can build some serious discipline mm-hmm. is if you can consistently do that for a couple of weeks and then do it for 100 days and 1,000 days and 3,000 days and you can keep moving through and you can create that, then it just opens a door up to so many other things. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you start, you start building your knowledge base and you start reading. Um, like you always preach, you know, uh, leaders are readers. Mm-hmm. So you start picking up, you start picking up books of all these other people that have built big shit. You start listening to what they have to say about it. And you pick, pull pieces from everybody. Mm-hmm. And so I started doing that and she's watching me and I'm talking to her about everything that I'm doing. And she's always been a person that in my opinion was always doing a bit better than me all the time. Even though it wasn't something that she was openly shoving in my face, she was more educated than me. She was more accomplished than me in those ways. She was a better person just in her heart and as a human being than I feel like I was. She was better in all these different ways. So I think that as I started passing that and I was telling her to come on, she started, she was like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, what are, what are we doing here? And I basically said, you've got two options when people grow. You can grow like this mm-hmm. or you can grow like this. Mm-hmm. We don't have to grow apart, mm-hmm. but in order to grow, sometimes we're on our own path. We just have to be right. going the same direction. Exactly. 
right? Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, let's keep going the same direction. I'll push. I'll pull you. When you get up there, you push me. We'll just keep going. So I started pushing out of her comfort zone because I told her the one way I grew was it's getting scary. uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I started pushing her to be very, very uncomfortable. And she would, the one thing that was always beautiful is she would look back at me. You know what, like a kid looks back at you like, yeah. Do you got me? Yeah. She would do that with yeah. me. She'd look back like, I'm going to do this, but you got me. I'm like, I got you. Like, I'm. Yeah. Listen, if I've done it, I'm not going to let you fail. Yeah. So just, I promise. Because like the podcast, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do the podcast. So he did one. I did number two. She lost. You know she's like, I mean? well, I'm going to let you do it. I can do this. Do it. Yeah. So, yeah. And now we've yes, got 13, we just, 14, 15 yeah, podcasts. I mean, yeah. all and, kinds of stuff. We yeah. just, I've, I went on, uh, I went to Emily Frisella's conference, the woman conference um, last week. Yeah. Wonderful. It was a lot of fun. Met some great women and everything, yes. Mm -hmm. But that, I hadn't done that since I was a teacher. You know what I mean? Went to conferences and met different people and left Bobby with the kids for three days. Well, that and, was the cool thing, too, you because know? we're only an hour away from there. So for her to travel was, wasn't real convenient, but it wasn't impossible. She's right. got to come home and be right. my own bed. I said, absolutely not. Yeah. I said, right. in order for you to get everything out of this experience, you're, you're going to go there. You're going to stay there. Right. You're going to do whatever they have going on. You're going to go home at night, you're, in the evening. You're going to open your workbook up. You're going to digest everything they talked about. You're going to take it all in and process it. And you're going to go on the next day. And the only thing I want you to worry about the whole time you're there is developing yourself. That's right. it. Yeah. And it was funny because leading up to that, she's like, we'll see. When you have the kids, we'll see. And I'm like, we will see. Because you're going <laughs> to understand that when we get to this, I mean exactly what I say. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to call you like, oh, my God, it's so hard. But sometimes I think they need to see what it is like to be at home with the kids all the time. And you need to pick them up from school. You know, laundry needs to be done. You need to cook. Yeah, but as women, we overwhelm things. The kids we are going to be fine. They're going to be know? fine. Like, it's like yes. sometimes it's in, – and you have to understand, us women, no means yes. Like, sometimes, like, she could have been like, well, the kids, and I'll come home. And she just wants you to be like, no, babe, I've got this. Yes. You go take care of yourself. They're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Whether they brush their teeth perfectly. Right. And the house might shit. be a mess. They'll be fine. But yes, you know shit. what I mean? You see? Uh, <laughs> you say. Well, yes. and, I've, and I've seen, you know, I've listened to your guys' story multiple times because it's given me a lot of encouragement as to the, the, the path that we mm -hmm. take is, is the correct path. But did, were you always a very driven person? Like, I've heard a little bit of your childhood. Yeah. But, like, what industry did you come from that where when so you guys met you up meet? and you were killing it in yes. sales? Like, yeah, how, how does that work? I never heard your origin story. What's your origin story? My origin story is I was a broken kid. Parents got divorced, uh, you know, got raised by my mom. She wasn't very, who wasn't around very much. Then I moved with my dad. My dad got remarried to a younger woman, so I was very cold. And then him and I got together, same industry. We're in the automotive when we met. Mm -hmm. I was trying so many. I had like four or five different jobs growing up just trying to figure out a very good work ethic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got focused on work, building my name. I started acquiring things at a young age, you know, homes and things. Just because I was a workaholic, I was empty, you know, so I was trying to fill it with stuff. And then we got together, and we were very both very driven. But mm -hmm. when we met, I was more driven than he was. He was really good at his work. We made pretty close to the same money. It was just that... He, I was used to failing and being around. My dad was an entrepreneur and failed mm -hmm. a lot. So we kind of got together, and uh, he was a used car manager for over 10 years in the same position. Mm -hmm. Now, I had come from the car business, and I had been promoted like four different times in like two years. So to me, it was like, why are you still doing that? Like, mm -hmm. what's, what's going on? And it wasn't that I was trying to. It was just I would jump in to do something, and by accident, because I tried something, I got promoted because I did it better than the other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I just kept trying to prove myself. So I was not just not afraid of anything. I was just really ballsy and... Uh, and then him and I got together, and I helped him see another version of himself that he never, never really knew was there. You know, he was from Oklahoma. He had never been outside of Oklahoma. What I part had of Oklahoma were you world. from? Norman. Norman, Oklahoma? Yeah. Okay. So, so it was just one of those things where, yeah, very driven growing up, but not in the right way driven. Right. Like, I was very opinionated. I didn't put up with anybody's shit. I took care of myself. It was hard for me to start a relationship or anything because I didn't need anybody. I had my own stuff. So learning to be together was really hard for us and we did not meet as young as you were you know in in that i mean i was 24 he was 26 but you we know. celebrated anniversaries very close together you guys did your 16 year we just celebrated ours like just literally a week or two before you guys because yeah. i'd seen Super cool. yeah. yeah so i'd seen that i was like holy cow i didn't realize you guys had your anniversary yeah. that close yeah. to ours. ours is june 28th so oh, yeah, yeah cool yeah. Yeah. july 4th mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so it was one of those things so i was very driven but then i went through the whole like parenting and being the mom and being the ballsy one to being the scared one because you know you have kids you think twice about things instead of jumping yes. in and then losing who I was as a person to just finding myself again and you know getting wired for business and just figuring stuff out and working as a team but you know 
we uh, did lose each other for a while. So this is why we're so passionate about like not losing yourself and just you know going and, and working through problems or in a fight and all these different things. But thank you guys so much for watching the podcast. I had a question for you. Do you guys feel exhausted? Do you feel like you're just going through the motions of life? Do you desire a deeper connection with your spouse? Do you feel like you live in the same house but are miles apart? Listen, we've developed a new program that we just dropped called Relationship Ascendancy. If you go to our website or text LIMITLESS to the number below, we will send you our special offer on our new program. Check out our website and we'll hear from you soon. Thank you. Andy wants to ask you guys some juicy questions. I already yes. know, I can see it in his face. Well, Please. well, the biggest thing is nobody teaches anybody how to have a marriage. No. Mm -hmm. And so you just figure it out together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, that's the whole goal. Like, that's what the whole purpose of like doing the podcast yeah. is so people can just understand that like a lot of people just don't have any guidance. And then there's a lot of people, we're in the era where there's so many influencers that the people that are teaching it, you don't even know if they're living it. No, you I, talk about that. You're like, course. if you want to do something, go follow, go model somebody else yeah. that's that has the life you want. Well, no. they could have the money and the fame and all those kind of stuff if you idolize that. But what about marriage and relationships? Yeah. We talk about relationships Super being important. such an, uh, the best currency that there possibly is. Of course. And that's relationships with your spouse. That's relationships with friends. That's relationships with business partners. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just relationships. Yeah, rich in all areas of life. And if you remember what it was like when you were engaged or when you dated and stuff like that, if you could pull that into your marriage 16, 20, 25, 30 years later, how happy and successful you could be. I mean, I still walk into the room sometimes and Bobby, like, still, he still says, I st he still feels like I gave him butterflies. There's or, not know? a time that I've been sitting on my bed watching my phone in the evening and she doesn't come into my peripheral with no clothes on. <laughs> and all of a sudden things go silent and she's just doing her thing and she'll look over and I'm just like, and she's like, really? And I'm like, it'll never not be that way. It'll never not be that way. And he still looks at me like he did when we were kids. You know you what I mean? You have those love eyes. We yeah, talk about those love still. eyes all the good. time. You need to go home and get some humping done. You got a good man. Andy's going to ask you if you guys have sex every day because I know his mind. We do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To be yeah. honest with you, I think it's super important, but I don't think it needs to be hollow. I think it needs to no, be no, intentional, no. Yeah, passionate. I think it needs to have meaning. Yeah, not saying it has to be an hour long kids, session. We still are able to find time. So how I mean, many times do you hear people no... say, "We just don't find time. We're busy with work. Yeah. We're tired." To have sex? Yes. Yes. No, not you guys. How no, many times do you no. hear other people no, 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 tell no, no, you no. that? I didn't say that. So I was looking at him yeah. like, "Do we?" Well, I mean, if in, somebody doesn't have time, we don't have time, and we find time. So right. We find time for whatever. Yes. Yeah, we don't go to sleep until we have sex. And well, it's a ritual and it's real. It's like it's like a routine. It's, it's a like, connecting thing for us. Yeah, it's yeah. like going to the gym. You know what I mean? It's like that's what we do. If days go by and that hasn't happened, say we're we are busy. I'm out of town or whatever. You'll start to feel this tension build up, and that's what it is. Oh, we have phone sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't Look really leave our side okay, anymore. We go, we go, we travel everywhere together. It's very rare for us. But to it's not a disconnection. Together. That you can start to feel, yeah. and and if you are good at spotting that disconnection, you understand right away what it is. Mm -hmm. As soon as that connection's made, everything's the slate's cleared again. Because it wasn't on purpose; mm -hmm. it was just. Or if you're still old enough to have periods, you know what I mean. You still yeah. have those times, right. you know what I mean, that you work through. But it's just like, I don't think people value that enough. They don't value the intimacy of right. a relationship enough. They think it's something that's an obligation well, for well, them over, to do. Over time, people just get over it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, Why would so. you get over it? No, I right? know, but I'm saying like people do. No, like, you're correct. You're well, a thousand percent correct. Because they're assuming what the other person thinks. That's the biggest problem that most couples have is that they think that the other person doesn't want or does want something. They're thinking for the other sure. person. Yeah. I always talk about this. You know, we have like little masterminds. And let's talk about the guy. And the guy comes and he touches a girl. And, you know, and typically the girl's not going to be like, oh, here, have Right. So then they're like, we'll see what she does. And then the girl doesn't give the exact reaction that he's looking for. Yeah. And then it's over. And they're like, okay, so I guess I'll wait till tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes a week. And then, yeah. then the week comes two weeks. And mm -hmm. then, then nothing ever happens, you know. But, you know, women were. We're different in that sense because we're trained at a very young age to not be the easy one, to be the one that says that's why that's why I said no means right. yes a lot of different times. But, you know, if you if you get past that, and sometimes we want the man to try a little harder, but yeah. it doesn't mean we don't want it. You right. know, so it's like if you can get past thinking for the other person, then you will solve ninety nine percent of the problems yeah. that you have in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Thinking for the mm -hmm. other person is very dangerous when it comes to sex, when it comes to anything that you do. Assumptions. Assumptions is yeah. like the death of everything. Well, and what's funny is like you talk about all the development, uh, like the way this all trickles down. So like you start to take better care of yourself. You start to get in shape. And you might have had all that passion before, 
But once you've got big biceps and you got some abs and you've got some stuff going on, how much how much better is it then? Mm-hmm. And then and, and she's that way, and so it just creates this amplification Retraction. of the intimacy, of the attraction, yeah. of the love, of of all that. And in the meantime, you have these kids that are watching all that. You know, oh, they're kissing them again. They're not watching that, but you know, they're watching the kiss and stuff like that. And they're like, they're so affectionate. But you know what? You'll grow up. And you'll have set the bar so high yeah. for any man that thinks about dating your daughters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're either going to be as good as your as your dad was or as Keaton talked about when we were talking to him. He's like, you know, if they look at a man and they're like, you don't even treat me as good as my dad treats his ex-wife. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're a piece of crap. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not, you don't even pass a sniff test. Exactly. Like, out of here. So, and you want them to have those high standards, too. Of course, especially yeah. when it comes to somebody they're going to spend the rest of their life with. Yeah. I mean, that's to be the highest standard that you have. Right. I mean, it's crazy. So, what's next for you guys? What's next in, like, your business and your family? Like, what's your next big goal? What is it that you're wanting to accomplish in life? I know you have your podcast. Mm-hmm. I know you have these businesses that are, that are they're very successful. What's the next level for you? What, what, what is it that you want to grow? So, right now, our season of life that we're in and, and what we're pushing for is our purpose. Mm-hmm. And we talk about people finding their purpose and, and what they really are passionate about. And when we created the Limitless Vitality Group, our passion was helping people build business through scaling their relationships. Mm-hmm. That's really, really what it was. If you look at the definition of scaling and you apply that to what that would mean if you did a relationship, the reason we picked that is because s- building something and scaling something are not necessarily the same thing. The way that you would go through those techniques, mm-hmm. those are different. The reason you scale a relationship versus just building is because scaling requires a little bit more of, of, a, of a delicate, intentional pieces, putting in certain places for that to build upon itself to a greater level, not just to accomplish something, but to right. always be evolving. When you build one time, you scale over and over. Over and over and over, and over again. Okay. It's a reinvention, right? Because mm-hmm. you're constantly reinventing. So right now, um, we're just bringing brand awareness to what we offer, um, the Limitless Vitality Group, and basically that is that. It's building business. It's building business with couplepreneurs. We deal with a lot of people that are in business together mm-hmm. or they're in business um, like one of them is in business, but the other one just inherently is in the business as well, whether right. they help them with it or not. Because if you're with a, a, a driven individual who's in business, they just operate differently. It's a totally mm-hmm. different world. A lot of people around you can't relate. You have to find people that are like-minded, that understand yeah. what you're going through, your difficulties and all that stuff. It's the same things that you guys talk about a lot with people. But That's we good. just we talk very exclusively with a lot of those people yeah. and um, help them. Yeah. Help them yeah. strengthen their relationships yeah. and, and help them strengthen their marriages. Or if you're just dating or if you're a single person wanting to find that relationship, attract that relationship and make it the best it can be right out of the gate and it not destroy your business. Because right. even though people want to keep those things separate, you cannot keep your personal life and your business life yeah. separate. They no. melt together. The one affects the other one. It can either make it great or it can destroy it. It's up exactly to you. Exactly right. We right. talk about that all the time. So how do people reach out to you? Um, you can go uh, see us on Instagram right now. It's probably the biggest platform that we, we work on, and that's uh, uh, Bobby Gini Official on Instagram, um, which links over to our, through the bio, it'll link over to uh, our Facebook page and also to a landing page that tells a little bit more about us and what we offer. Um, it's a little bit more of a, a detailed version right. of it. And then there's a click link there if they want to link in and go any further. But right now we're really just bringing a lot of value to people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just trying to put value out there. And then we have services that we offer if anybody wanted to get closer and, and, and do something a little bit more. But right now we're really just working on that purpose and building it and bringing that information a little bit at a time out to people, yeah. letting them know it does exist. There are people out there exactly. that do this. Mm-hmm. And there are people that have the life that you want to have and that we can show you. Um, and that if you have to travel halfway across the United States to find like-minded people and do stuff with them, to do it, do it man. Do it. Get the plane ticket and go. So. That's good. So I'm, I'm glad that they, there are people out there that do they are what they preach, mm-hmm. yes. which is a, the important thing. And you said something super special. is like, hey, we're just trying to deliver value to the people because we want to share what we have, and it's truly special that they know. So I strongly encourage, like, if you're – want to build that life and have a badass business have a badass marriage have a badass be badass parents and have everything you want in life which is something that we talk about all the time to reach out to the to you guys and then just just be super you know you guys are the real deal so thank you so much amazing. so yeah anything you want to say yeah, we love you guys I'm glad you're here we that watch you grow yeah. you guys look like different human beings every time we see you yeah, yeah you get better looking <laughs> yeah. oh well thank you yeah, yeah. i know Keep you guys got a lot of people uh, around so we value all the time that you guys have, have ever given us um yeah. And um, just that those small things yeah. make a big difference yeah. to us, especially when 
We know you're busy. We know we know you guys are busy people. What? We're all busy people. It's just yeah. the I, small reach outs. Busy. The yeah, they're yeah. all busy. But I mean, I can be busy with a hundred nothings. Mm-hmm. I might have five really solid things going on in my life sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I'm sure. busy, but I'm not always productive. And so I've tried to make sure that I'm a little bit better about intentional, more yeah. intentional about those. Not just being busy, but everything that's taking my time having meaning the people i'm hanging out with the people i'm talking to associating with doing business with my family because in my opinion if i'm not doing business or with her all the little bit of extra time i have i want to be giving to my kids of course and so if i'm not doing if i'm just i don't do bars i don't do friend nights i don't do she's my best friend we go we go have dinner dates you know what i mean we talk business sometimes we talk life sometimes um, we talk personal development we talk whatever keeps us right it's all all integrated yep yeah that's great you only have so many matches. Make sure you choose them wisely, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being on here with us, and we appreciate yes. you guys driving here, bringing your family. It's it's truly awesome to just be Super around like-minded awesome. people that are willing to grow, willing to pour mm-hmm. into the community, willing to just... I mean, it's it's just really cool because in a world out there, everybody teaches you the complete opposite of what you're preaching. So it's like it's like a fight against you know the wind. But if you have that light, Mm -hmm. then you will find those people that really want it, and that's what that's what it's for. So and something we just found really special about you guys to finish it up was I know sales is a big thing for you guys. That's Mm -hmm. where you came from. It's a lot of the content that you have, but I know that you've made a really big shift in the recent years to not only just the sales type stuff, but the value of everything else behind that and Mm -hmm. changing your life and total transformation. And the reason that we wanted to, I aligned so well, we aligned so well with that ideology of you guys and to come on here and talk about giving value and offering services and not just giving sales pitches Mm -hmm. per se, because I don't have anything to sell you, but I have a whole hell of a lot to show you and tell you. And yes, we have other things that you can do that you could pay for, but that's not why I'm here. You know what I'm here to show you that there is this life that exists and there's plenty of ways and and information and free content. We've got almost 400 videos on our Instagram that you can go through of content, a podcast of us talking about different techniques. It's, it's all there. Yeah. It's priceless. It's all about delivering and over delivering. Information right. era. Right. Guys, make sure everybody goes and follow them on Instagram. Super important. And then you guys can send them a DM if you guys want to get close to them, kick yes. ass. So we love you guys. We appreciate it. Super grateful for you. Um, it's rare me and my wife get to do a podcast together with someone else. I don't think we've done like maybe two or three. Yeah, we haven't done too years. many. We only yeah. do yeah. it we with couples excited. anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. We this just, it, the so dynamic excited. of it's so much yeah. better in yeah. my yeah. opinion. So like, I just want to say like we don't get to do it much, but... Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. We get to spend more time together. So we love you guys. We appreciate you. We'll see you in the next video. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and shoot them a DM if you need anything or get close, you know, and want to learn more about the Vitality Group. Awesome. Also, Vitality Group. Um, we love you guys. See you in the next video. Let's Thanks. Go. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.